Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello, friends, and welcome to Jack and Ippy Prisons. I just want to say I'm overly excited today about something that I can say, and that is that I am going to offer you the most wonderful thing we've ever had on television, I think, the Judeo-Christian New World Order, the seven programs that we just been doing will be included on here. So if you go to our website, www.jbim.com, or also go to the 800 number, 1-800-JVI-7777, or write to us, please, write to us, Jack Benepe Ministries, Post Office Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007, Hey, if you live in Canada, Jack Benepe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Now, friends, this is a wonderful, wonderful offer. It's a $175 offer for $69.95. Oh, please make the call or write to us. Write to us. We'll be happy to hear from you. Now, something else. We are doing, and I think you'll be very excited about it. So many people have said, I wish we could ask Jack Van Ippie a question. I wish that I could talk with him. You can. All you have to do is write the question with your address, and we will answer that. We'll give it to Jack, whatever your question might be about things going on in the world, and we are all going, also going to be answering those on our program. Questions and answers, Jack. I'm so excited about If you about want your that. name mentioned, give it to us. But listen to me. I don't care if we get 5000 a week. I'm going to be able to get these things to you because I am the walking Bible. And J. Vern McGee said I changed his name to the Belgian Bible bombshell. Yes. And I'm going to see that everybody gets their questions answered. Write us. Amen. So write to us. Uh, and I just want to say that today's program is very important because it focuses on the things we have been talking about. The Judeo-Christian eternal New World Order. How can you combine the two religions? Take a look and listen right now. It's all on there. Some of you might be wondering right now, how can you really combine the two religions? The Jewish religion because that's the Old Testament, and the Christian religion, the fulfillment of the Old Testament in the New. Uh, you know, they've always, the Jewish scholars have always had great respect for Jesus. They really have. And I'd like for you to take a look, please, and read a couple of the Jewish scholars with me right now. The first one, take a look, please. Ernest Tradner. As a Jew sees Jesus, now he wrote this in 1931, speaks of tremendous influence Jesus has exerted on history. Take a look. It is estimated that more than 60,000 volumes have been written about him. 800 languages and dialects tell a story to me because I am a Jew. This is an amazing thing, for nothing quite like it has ever happened on so large a scale in the annals of man. Here's another one. Take a look. Solomon Freehoff. And he wrote this, Stormers of Heaven, written in 1931, writing on the influence and significance of Jesus. Read this with me. Jesus of Nazareth is the most famous name in the world. The Galilean teacher looms as large today as he did centuries ago. His words are still on the tongues of men, and his parables are as fresh as when he first uttered them. Artists are as eager to paint him as they were in the Middle Ages. Scholars study him as much as ever. Prayers are addressed to him with unabated fervor. His career is known to every child in the Western world, from his birth in Bethlehem to his crucifixion on Golgotha. His sayings and parables are constantly quoted. They've been part of the daily speech of men. Time has not faded 
the vividness of his image. Poetry still sings his praises. He is still the living comrade of countless lives. Friends, can you imagine how they revered Jesus? And uh, certainly, as I said, these are scholars of the Jewish faith. Now, how can we combine, even though we respect him, how can we combine their religion with the Christian religion, Jack? That's my first question to Jack. Oh, I'm going to really put my heart into this. First of all, the five points of Christianity's fundamentalist movement started in 1910. And they said, we don't care what denomination you, to which you belong. If you believe these five points, you're one of us. The deity of Christ, he's the son of God, the virgin birth, his blood atonement on Calvary's cross, his resurrection from the dead, and his coming again to rule as king of the kings and lord of the lords. You just heard our presentation and when God gave this to me I said if I get one verse out of place and you just heard it it'll be destroyed but you heard that the Jewish rabbis if they would believe it and start preaching it would have to preach the same five points because it's the Old Testament no ifs ands or buts plus there's so many other things there are 66 books in our Bible 64 of them were written by Jews and only two by a Gentile. His name was Luke. And he did his own book, Luke, and the book of Acts. Secondly, we both have the same 16 Old Testament prophets. And all the 1,000 signs that were given came practically, totally, to Jewish prophets, except again from the book of Luke. Then again, we have this group of apostles in Matthew 10 all Jews everything about Christianity comes out of Judaism we've got the same Ten Commandments and you know it's just amazing that we have guys that are Christians who are trying to show the comparisons between Islam and Christianity that's bunk even worse is that we have ministers in 18 different denominations in our nation preaching replacement theology. And they say, God is through with the Jew forever because they were guilty of deicide, killing Christ. No, they weren't. Well, doesn't it hold it? God had a plan. And you couldn't get saved if God hadn't sent his son to a Jewish virgin so that his son was a Jew because he loved the Jews so much. Deuteronomy 7, verses 7 and 8. And lo and behold, <clears throat> he says, I love the Jew. This is God the Father, Yahweh, speaking. He says, they're the apple of mine eye, Zechariah 2, 8. They are my elect, Isaiah 42, 1, 45, 4, and chapter 65, verses 9 and 22. They are my betrothed, my sweetheart. What? Hosea 2.19 and my wife. Jeremiah 3.14. And yet you guys are saying God's through with the Jew forever because of what they did to Christ. And you've gone so far like the Presbyterian Church USA, not some of the Presbyterian, but this one, plus you other 17 groups saying, let's boycott Israel. Do away with Sponsoring any company or business that has anything to do with you. God forgive you apostate backslidden ministers, some in my own denomination. You're in trouble with God. He loves Israel. And oh, Rexella, isn't it amazing? Yes. What they can say about, oh, let's study the comparisons between Islam and Christianity. And it's blasphemy. And I've named one guy many times. I'll name him again. Sorry, Rick Warren. Why did you get your Bible out? Why did you show your church, Saddleback, and all the churches of America where you've worked and helped build that the similarities are between the Old and New Testament? 
the Jesus of the fast. Let me tell you why. This is so important, Rick Zillman. The Jews are not responsible for the death of Christ. First of all, it was Romans who nailed him there, even though the Jew cried out, some of them, crucify him. But wait. Oh, I love that. This great Pope Benedict XVI wrote a new book absolving the Jew of all responsibility for the death of Christ. Thank you, Pope Benedict. Now here's why the Jew is not responsible. God the Father said, and there's a trinity, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. And one day they sat down and began to discuss what was there on earth. The Trinity was there before the foundation of this world. Yes. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Genesis 1.1. But who was with him? Come on now, you rabbis, seek this out. Proverbs 30, verse 4. Who's established all the ends of the earth? What's God's name? What's his son's name? Hey! That's thousands of years before he came to earth. Thou, Bethlehem, out of you shall come the Redeemer. And he'll come to Bethlehem. Happened. All right, now let's go a little farther. So the Father says, one of us has to go, because without shedding of blood is no remission of sins. Hebrews 9.22. It's the blood that makes an atonement for the soul, Leviticus 17.11. So one of us must go to earth and take a body with blood to shed that blood. And one day the father said to Jesus, because Jesus said, I'll go. Galatians 4, 4. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son to do what? Oh boy, this is something. To become the redeemer of the world. He was crucified according to Revelation 13, verse 8. All in God's plan before it came. So it was God sending his son to go to a cross to shed his blood to save your soul and mine. And without that happening, none of us could ever get to heaven. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish and have everlasting life. God sent his son to be the savior of the world, First John 4, 14. So it happened. Don't blame it on the Jew. God's plan was being worked out with Romans, Jews, and many others who were there for the Passover, saying, crucify him. That's the story. And God loves Israel. And, you know, anytime you preachers talk against the Jew, you are talking against Almighty God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? First Chronicles 21.1, Satan. The devil, slimy serpent, Satan, stood against Israel, stood against the Jew. And so are you, you bunch of apostate ministers. Get rid of that abominable doctrine that God is through with the Jews forever because I've got a book here. It's Isaiah 56, 5 says, I will give Israel an everlasting name. You know how long everlasting is? That's as long as we're going to live with him forever and forever. And that's their name, and they're going to stand, and nobody's going to stop them. And between Judaism and Christianity, at the return of Jesus Christ, we're going to have the Judea Christian New World Order. Come quickly, Jesus. Oh, yes, come quickly, Lord Jesus. You know, Jack, as you were speaking just a moment ago, I couldn't help but think, friends, that the first ones to accept Jesus as Savior of the world were Jews. In fact, the first apostles, of course, Jews, the first ones to be missionaries and go around the world and preach that the Savior had come were Jews. Uh, that first of all, they gave it in Jerusalem. They gave it all across uh, their land of Israel. And then the Apostle Paul went to the Gentiles. He went to Rome. The Romans were converted to Christ because he had the message that you and I believe as Christians. How wonderful. Now, one thing that I do want to ask Jack, as a nation, they still are looking for the Messiah right now. How are they going to one day recognize that Jesus was a Messiah 
and as a, a nation turn to him as their Christ. How will they do that, Jack? I love this little saying. The New Testament is in the Old Concealed. The Old Testament is in the New Revealed. And my, are the rabbis of Israel going to be shocked. Now, in Revelation chapter 7, New Testament, verses 4 to 14, we have the most exciting story ever. And it's about the greatest revival in history, and it's going to come through the Jews. What? Now listen to this. The 144,000 messengers, evangelists, are not the Jehovah's Witnesses, as they claim, nor are they the British Israelites. And that's the world tomorrow crowd. They say Israel is the English-speaking people of the world. I don't know where they got it. But listen, in this text, beginning with the fourth verse of the seventh chapter of Revelation, I repeat, you have the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. These are Jewish names. Now, I'm not going to quote each verse in succession because they all say the same thing, naming each tribe. Just give the names of the tribes. Judah, Reuben, Gad, Aser, Nephilim, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. There they are. These are the guys and their tribes that are going to bring the greatest revival in history to the world. And you guys preaching replacement theology know what you're talking about. Now, I'm going to talk to you British Israelites for a moment. You said, well, it's going to be us. Well, those names didn't sound like Winston Churchill to me. <laughs> I like to have a little fun too, Rick Sella. But what happens? They're preaching the gospel of salvation. Christ died for our sins. How do you know that? Verse 9, I saw a multitude which no man could number. And verse 14, they came out of the great tribulation, the seven-year period of woe on the earth, and washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb, and the Lamb is Jesus. For John the Baptist, when he saw him, said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And that's what these Jews are going to be preaching. But wait. We see in Romans eleven twenty six why this happened. Romans 9, 10, 11. Chapter 9, the Jews pass. Chapter 10, they're present, blinded, spiritually. Chapter 11, the great revival in history. All Israel shall be saved. Romans 11, 26. Can't get around that, can you? Now, as I studied this matter today, it's a remnant that gets saved during the seven years, not all. The Great blast for revival comes when Jesus Christ's feet hit the Mount of Olives. You say, well, how do you know that? That Romans eleven twenty six, the Redeemer shall come out of Zion, Jerusalem, as he comes from heaven and sets his foot upon the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem. And this is our Jesus, the Lamb of God. And they've washed their the robes in the message of the blood, but they're also preaching Matthew twenty four fourteen, the gospel of the kingdom. Gospel means good news. And now the good news is the king is coming. The king is coming. And when he comes, he's going to turn millions of Jews, the ones that were beyond and after the remnant. And it's going to be the greatest day in history. And it's then when they all agreed that they're going to set up the new world order of Jews and Christians. And it's so exciting, Jack, to think that there's going to be such a revival in uh, Israel even before the Lord comes back. But before that revival ends, it's sort of a continuation, a continuation of awakening as to who Jesus really was, not just their Messiah, but he was the Savior of the world. Now... Jack often on our program talks about a time when Israel is going to go through this tribulation where Russia and Iran and Syria and China come from the north. 
But Jesus is going to come back to stop that tribulation. How wonderful. And, of course, we know that he sets up his kingdom on earth as king of kings and lord of lords. Jack, would you expand on this now? How that, although Armageddon is coming, it's not going to last because Jesus will stop it, correct? Oh, definitely. That's Revelation eleven eighteen. He puts an end to those who are destroying the earth and destroying one another. Now, he does something else. He sets his feet upon the Mount of Olives, and he begins to announce that he's going to create this new world order, a global government. Now, do you know that that's in the Old Testament? Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Unto us a child is born, virgin birth. Unto us a son is given when he returns to earth. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Now it's peace for the next thousand years. Set up his own government? Yeah. It's so plain, you've just heard it. And the first thing he does is get the heads together, the Jews and the Christians. Now, he's going to have a title, and it's the king. Does Judaism believe that? God the Father in heaven, Psalm 2, 6. I will set my king upon the holy hill of Jerusalem, Zion. There it is. The New Testament, when Christ comes to put a stop to the battle of Armageddon and to set up his kingdom for a thousand years of peace, it says in Revelation 170, comes with clouds and every eye shall see him. That's that bolt of lightning from east to west. Next time there's a lightning blitz out there, get on your knees and pray. That might be the hour. Where is that found? Matthew 24, 27. As the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But how does he look? How is he dressed? What's he going to say? Revelation 19, beginning with verse 11. He comes on a white horse. You know, when he went... In Jerusalem the first time was lowly on the donkey. Now he's coming regally, royally, like kings do, all through history, on a white horse. And the armies in heaven follow him. That's all those who were raptured. When he said, come up here, the Revelation 4, 1, they went up in the twinkling of an eye. They're coming back. And guess what? They're coming to worship with him and serve with him as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's his title. What? The King of the Kings and Lord of Lords. So there will still be other rulers here, but he'll be the head one. Where? In Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what Gabriel the angel said to the Virgin Mary? Oh, this is chilling. Spine tingling. Mary? Your son will be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest God, and he shall sit upon the throne of his father, David, the Jew. And of his kingdom there will be no end. It's never going to end. First a thousand years, yes. Revelation 20, verse 4. But then he's recommissioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. And now the kingdom extends throughout the whole eternity. Isn't it great that we have eternal life when we get saved? And so we'll be there for that government forever and forever with him because the world's without end. Isaiah 45, 17, Ephesians 3, 21. For the Jews, Isaiah 45, 17. And for the Christians, Ephesians 3, 21. Now, get ready. When he's sitting on that throne, Listen to the crowds in Philippians 2.10. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's all for the glory of his Father. 
as Jesus is highly honored as the king of the world and the leaders of the world for all eternity. And I'm sorry if you guys have preached replace some theology and 2,604 times you change Israel into the church and 930 times you change Jerusalem into heaven. What miserable interpretation of God's holy word. And God's true with the Jew forever. Come on. Do you believe this book? Isaiah 56, 5. God speaking. I will give Israel an everlasting name. And then as Judea, that the Jews and the Christians serve together, it will be the new world order forever and forever. Amen. Oh, friends, as ever, we needed to be ready for the coming of the Lord. It's now. I'm going to ask Jack if you would pray that wonderful prayer of accepting Jesus into your heart. Jack. Have you Christians prayed that prayer, the Lord's Prayer on Sundays? It's about to happen as Jesus returns. You need to get ready to enter that great temple when Jesus arrives. Father. There's only one way to get to heaven and one way to be in that temple when the heaven is moved to earth. Heaven is coming down and glory will fill our souls like the song says. But we've got to be ready. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth from all, all sin, every kind. Look right now, Father. I need help. I am far from you. And once I walked with you, now I'm away from you. I'm afraid I'm not really saved. I just talk the language. Today I want you, Jesus. I'm coming back. Whether it's for the first time or a repeat, pray it. Lord, I receive you today as my Savior. And the one who forgives everything I've ever done, come into my heart now, Jesus. In your holy, holy, beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Oh, if you prayed that prayer, please write to me. You know, I really want to send you something very special. First steps in a new direction. The Lord wants to walk with you and talk with you Amen. and guide you. And, of course, remember, Jack Benavie Ministries, Post Office Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Please write to me. I'll get this in the mail as soon as I hear from you. And those in Canada, don't forget, that's Box 1717, Postal Station 8, Windsor, Ontario, in 986Y1. I want to hear from you. I want to leave you with this wonderful Wonderful thought. God can take the place of anything, but nothing can take the place of God. Amen. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very mm. much. Amen. Bye-bye. Amen.